is we're going to talk about seventh chords. Now, seventh chords actually add one more note, which is the seventh of the scale, to the triad. They still consist of a root, a third, and a fifth, but now they have a seventh. There are actually five types of seventh chords. A major, a minor, dominant, half diminished, and diminished, or fully diminished. So let's talk about the major one. We're going to take our nice key of F. One, we have an F, A, C, there's our triad, and then we're going to add an E. Now this is what is called a major triad, or I'm sorry, major seventh chord. The reason why it's called a major seventh chord is because this right here is a major seventh interval. And this right here is a major triad. Okay, when you have a major triad and a major seventh, you're going to have a major seventh chord. Okay, so let's build up a different one. I'm going to still keep the same notes, F, A, C, and E. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the seventh. Now what that does is that now creates a major triad on the bottom like we had. Okay, a major triad. But it all it gives us all now a minor seventh as our top. So now this is actually called a dominant scale. A lot of times it's also called a major minor uh, seventh chord. Okay, so you have a, a dominant seventh chord or a major slash minor seventh chord. And the only difference between that and the major is the flat seventh. Okay, I'm going to build one more on there, and that is we're going to make a minor chord. Okay, F, A, C, and E. Okay, and th those basic notes stay the same. We're going to keep our minor seventh, which we had a second ago. Okay, minor seven. But this time we're going to have a minor triad. In fact, I want to move this over a little bit because I want to be able to put a flat on the third. That makes a minor triad next to it here. So a minor triad. That is what is called a full minor seventh chord. The first one that we had was the major, which had a major seventh and a major triad. The second one we have is called a dominant or a major minor because it has a major triad and a minor seventh. The final one is the minor seventh chord, and that's because you have a minor triad and a minor seventh putting all those together. The last two are half diminished and diminished. Now the way they deal with this, you still have, again, the same basic notes, F, A, C, and E. In fact, I'm going to build both of them so we can compare them side by side right away. F, A, C, and E. Now, a half diminished means that we are going to take and diminish these two notes there. So we get a diminished triad. So this is now a diminished triad. Okay, and both of these use a diminished triad. So I'm going to put both of them on it. You can usually tell diminished triads because the, you have a bunch of, of accidentals and changes of notes somehow. That's usually how you can tell really simply. Uh, so this is a diminished triad. The difference between a half diminished chord, which will be this one, half, versus a fully diminished, is that the seventh of the chord here is going to remain minor. So this one is still a minor 7. 
That tells you it's a half diminished scale. If it is fully diminished, you're going to end up having two flats. And this is how you can tell a, a fully diminished scale most of the time is there will be two flats somewhere in the chord. But now what you have is you have a diminished seventh. A diminished seventh. If you notice, a diminished seventh is actually the same note as a sixth. See? Because the E, E flat, E double flat is actually the same as D. It's an harmonic note. But it doesn't fit the chord structure of being able to stack it up on top of each other. Okay, so these are seventh chords. We talked about the major, which has a major seventh and a major triad. We talked about the dominant, which has a minor seventh but a major triad. We talked about the minor, which has a minor triad and a minor seventh. We talked about the half diminished, which has the minor seventh and the diminished triad. And we talked about the fully diminished seventh chord, which has a diminished seventh and a diminished triad. There are lots of things that go along with this. Okay? This is an introduction on how you build them. Okay? There are lots of ways to use this. Seventh chords can have the same concept of inversions as triads. Now, I'm not going to do all of the different inversions. I'm just going to show you a basic one. Okay? We're going to go with a D seventh chord. Now, those of you who have caught on, this is actually a D minor seventh chord because you have a minor seventh between the D and the C and you have a minor chord because there's no F sharp. But this is the easiest one for me to show you the different inversions. An inversion is where the notes stay the same but the change position, just like on a triad. They still consist of a root, a third, a fifth, and a seventh. But there are four different types of inversions for seventh chords whereas only, there are only three for triads, and that's because each note gets a chance to be the bottom. In this case, we have our D. So, we'll move the D up top, and now we have F, A, and C. This first one that we have is our root position. This is going to be our first inversion. Okay, first inversion, just be that you took the root note and put it on top. Okay, a second inversion means that you're going to have two notes on top. See, usually like that. Okay, that is a second inversion. Now because we have three, four notes in this chord, we can add one more inversion where we have this note on the bottom. Okay, and we just build it up from there. So we have that note, F, and finally on the top of the ledger line, A. This is our third inversion. The root has the root on the bottom. The first inversion has the third on the bottom of the chord. The second inversion has the fifth of the chord on the bottom, and the third inversion has the seventh of the chord on the bottom. So that is the idea of inversions. And again, build the root first before you do an inversion so you don't forget to put in notes. For instance, if we did a dominant seventh, that means I would have to make sure that all of these Fs were sharp. If I did a uh, major seventh, I'd have to make sure that all of these C's are also sharp. That's why I say build a root first. It's much easier to structure it once you have all the stuff in place. Some quick information about seventh chords. Okay, to kind of finish off this one. Ways to help build seventh chords. Okay? Inter and, and then also talking about the interval build. First of all, Major. All notes in the seventh chord are natural to the major scale. So all the sharps, all the flats that are in the key signature need to be put into the chord. It is a major third, a minor third, and a major third to create the interval building. 
Dominant has a flat third, but a normal seventh. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I realized I had a mistake. It actually is a dominant is a normal third, but a flat seventh. Okay, it's a major third, minor third, minor third for your interval bill. Minor has the flat third and the flat seven. Minor third, major third, minor third for the interval building. Half diminished had the flat third, the flat fifth, and the flat seventh. Again, minor, minor, major for the interval building. And the diminished had a flat third, a flat fifth, and a double flat seventh, which gives you a minor third, minor third, minor third. So these are all the combinations to build seven chords. In fact, with their inversions, there are over 20 combinations that you can make. Okay, just out of these different chords. You have five different chords, four different inversions, and then add in all 12 P signatures. And you get all these different chords that you can mess with to create better sounding music. So I hope this has helped to, to understand the next step of chords, which is building seventh chords and the types of seventh chords and minor triads that you can make to help your music become better.